when the market slowed down, I started seeing all these guys that were up so much money in the year. And in my head, I started going like, I'm doing good. But like, if that was the market and we don't get that back, I did not take advantage of it like I wanted to. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, I have so many regrets. And so I'm like, you know what? Like, you can't trade like that. So I took, I took a bit of time off. I disciplined myself. And I was like, listen, like, that's not the market this is. Um, and then funnily enough, I, I took a vacation. I, I was living in Aruba and I took a vacation in Aruba for four days. Um, I bring my laptop and I have no stock stuff on my phone um, or on the phone that I brought. And so I told myself, I'm like, Monday, I'm going to start trading again, right? And when I came back Monday, it was the start of everything in November. Welcome back, everyone, to This Week in Steady Trade. Uh, we have a special guest, Connor, who is the king slapper. I don't know. He might... I don't know, Jack and uh, Connor here, you know, some beat, <laughs> <laughs> the king position. Um, but yeah, so he's going to talk about his story. Uh, he's a savage trader. I'm really excited to have him on. Uh, so I'm just going to pass the mic over to you. Uh, why don't you just like walk us through kind of how you got started, you know, your journey a little bit? Yeah, yeah, because, yeah man. Well, uh, first of all, thanks for having me on. And uh, so my story kind of, um, I started trading. Uh, not full, uh, not fully trading, mostly just looking at the market when I was about 17, I think. Um, it was kind of the tail end of the weed runs. Uh, so like Aurora, like all those type of tickers. And basically I was in uh, grade 11 at the time in economics class and we had a, like a little um, project where you got like fake money, you put it in a portfolio. You know, you wanted to see what, um, who makes the most money, won something, and then they had to talk about why they took their trades. And, I went on and I, you're only allowed to trade the Canadian market uh, in that project because I'm Canadian. And when I went on, it just said Aurora Cannabis at the top of it. Like it was like one of the top games, right? So I looked into that and I was like, well, it's a weed stock. That sounds pretty smart. So all in. So I just went all in with my fake money on Aurora. Um, when I did that, I just thought it was such a good idea that I gave my dad some money and said, hey, can you put this in um, Aurora for me as well? Uh, once he did that, the from there it just doubled, and I thought I was a genius, obviously. And I was like, okay, like you know, this is all I got to do for the rest of my life. So, you know, I started looking into it, and um, when uh, I started looking at trading for the first time, I was with that Ricky Gutierrez and those guys, and just trying to learn like the big board scalping um, type stuff. But um, I didn't really have the account size to play big board, you know, um, scalps like for two to three percent. So when I started seeing people talk about OTCs and um, stuff like that, where it was multiple hundred percent viewers, um, it, it was just super interesting to me. And, you know, that was the type of uh, market I could see myself trading because with my account size at the time, I could actually make money in that, uh, you know, in relative terms. So I started looking into OTCs and uh, from there, I mean, I've been trading OTCs now since I was maybe 18. Um, and from 18 to 19, it wasn't, there wasn't much trading. Um, 19 to 20, it's, I started to trade like full time. Um, I stopped my other businesses that I was working on and um, I was trading full time. And then the last year, so I mean, like a lot of other people is when it really took off for me. And, you know, so here we are now and I, I don't touch OTCs as much as I used to. Um, I'm mostly a big board trader now, but I'm kind of in my transition between the two, which, you know, it's a, it's a pretty interesting uh, situation. The transition for me, at least, was never that easy. It's a really different market, but that's kind of where I am now and where I started off. So, sick man. Do you want to break down? I guess just how you traded OTCs versus yeah. big caps too, and just the how you know so, they carry from one to the other. You know, I'm I'm a very big breakout trader. Um, that's why this market was so good for me. So I used, I've been doing this for like a year and a half or two years now, the same type of thing. And um, I would just take trades based on, um, I would just take trades on uh, breakouts, right? First day green days, the um, multi-day breakouts. And there wasn't many multi-day break till like, you know, March, 2020 to like January, February, March, uh, I mean, January, February, March of 2021. But um, in that market, there was breakouts every day that you'd be trading, right? So, I would just be looking for tickets all at volume because, I mean, it's it's zero sum game, right? Like you gotta be so. I was just looking for eight um, percent breakouts, right? And um, 
when I was playing those eight percent breakouts, it's a very consistent trade, something I was doing every day. And uh, that's when I started to scale up more in size and stuff. And I started playing gap ups a lot. And um, with the gap ups, I mean, all it was back in the day was for me, um, look for a tick for that gaps, right? And I, I, it was a very simplistic approach. And I think that's something a lot of people sleep on in the market is just taking things simple. Or I was just looking at, okay, these stickers gapped and I would just log them out, like which ones gapped and what they gapped up. And if there was pre-market volume or, you know, how it, how it kind of happens. And basically what I started to notice is just, you know, like the tickers that gap usually are more consistent at gapping. It's just like, there's certain tickers that ha are way stronger at breakouts than others, right? Like, you know, when you look at a certain ticker, okay, this one can break out or this one can uh, panic really hard or whatever, right? So, you know, a couple of tickers would gap up um, a lot. And, you know, these were like, you know, everybody knows these stickers like OZSC and AITX and AOYI, TSMP, like all of those stickers, right? So what I was doing, which a lot of people weren't willing to do is I would just continue to play the gap ups on it. And a lot of people weren't willing to do that because, you know, the stock's already up 100% or whatever. And they didn't realize like that was a pretty consistent trade. It's not a high, you know, I'm not making like, I mean, at times you were getting 20%, 30% um, gap ups, but it's not like you're getting that every day by any means, but it's a consistent trade. And it's another one to add to your playbook, right? And it hasn't really been working recently in the past few months. And some of the things, like one of the main things on that, because everybody was gapping things up. It wasn't like I was alone in doing so. It's a very obvious pattern. But one of the really good things that I was noticing is a lot of these tickers were gapping more on days that they were closing less strong. And so in my head, the way I can, the way I could process that or like think about that would be kind of, you know, if, if um, a ticker already has sellers in the close, there's going to be less sellers in tomorrow's open. And that's what I was just thinking. Right. And you, again, it's just keeping things the most simplistic way, because in that situation, I don't know why those tickers were gapping more in those days, but they were. I don't have to argue that. I just have to try and make a reason why it kind of makes sense and go from that, right? So instead of trying to figure out exactly what it was or, you know, if my idea even made complete sense and stuff, um, I just started analyzing the data, right? Like, let's see how often this works, how consistent it is, et cetera. And, you know, for whatever reason, that's how consistent it was. Like, it was super consistent, right? So those were my top trades for a while. I mean, those are the ones nobody else was looking at, right? Like, everybody else was looking at in January, February, um, even November, December, they were looking at the, the tickers that were up the most on the day and just gapping those. But I was doing that and also looking at tickers that were up less, right? And they weren't having a strong day or whatever it may be, but they were, uh, their recent gap, gap like they were gapping up on a lot of days before that. So if a ticker back then was gapping up on its first green day, its second green day, its third green day, and then on its fourth day where it's not closing strong, it just gapped up three days in a row, the thought process and the actual like based on the analytics, I guess you could say of the actual trade, it was working consistently. And that's just another trade in the playbook that not people had because it was one they would avoid, right? So then I was doing that. And then I was doing a lot of, uh, this is like my favorite um, OTC strategy. Um, I, don't, I don't have a name for it. Um, I would do it was, it was just called a dip rip. And basically I'm not a great bottom buyer. I can buy panics, but I'm not just like on a, on a ticker that's going to continue with strength, but it's just dipping a little bit. Like, I don't really know how to spot the bottom on. And instead of, you know, trying to um, force myself to spot bottoms, like I realize it's not, not what I'm talented at or whatever. So I would play the breakout to them. So like the easiest example would be just for numbers sake, let's say a ticker um, gaps and opens to a, a penny too, right? And it comes down to a penny. And then when it breaks that penny too, I would take a penny too. And in January and February, it was a 14% trade sweet spot, right? So if I'm doing one of those a day, one gap up a day, and then also doing, um, and then also doing a breakout or two a day, I mean, you know, it adds up pretty quickly. Like, obviously, it's not going to be like um, it's OTC, so it wasn't always the craziest of size. But a lot of time in that market, you could get some really good size and take some really big trades. I just had, you know, a couple of trades in my wheelhouse that. Um, or just working for me consistently, right? So I was just doing those every day and it was wake up, do that, scan for the ones that might offer that specific trade or any of those specific trades and then, you know, go in and actually do those trades. So that's pretty much all I was doing for, you know, January and February when I was trading OTC. And before January, I was doing the same thing. Like I've been playing those um, gap ups exact six years now, right? It's just back then, um, 
it wasn't always the same type of gap or, you know, like sometimes it was less of a gap or less volume on the ticker and stuff. And then a lot of volume came back to the market and it's been great. And so that's what I, that's what I do for OTC and, um, or what I did for OTC, I guess. I haven't been touching it as much lately just because I haven't found those opportunities um, as much for me. And kind of like if, I, if, if I'm there trying to find those opportunities, but they're just not presenting and stuff, I'd rather go try and transition into something I'm already going to transition into. Like I already want to be like at one point in my life, a big, big, big boards um, trader and not, you know, always an OTC trader because I want to level up and get to like a higher level and such. So, you know, since the market started slowing down, I've just been focusing on that when it comes to market wise. And, you know, now that it's summer and I want to kind of enjoy what, you know, we all worked hard for this year um, and last year. And now I want to enjoy a bit of that. So the big boards is like good to learn, you know, and less focus on the OTC. So um, right now for my transition into big boards, um, I'm still a breakout trader by heart, right? So the breakouts are still um, what I've been focusing on. And, you know, it's been less, um, but at the same time, my, my big board strategy is um, daily chart breakouts. So like one day uh, candlesticks, right? So like looking very big picture and um, looking for tickers that are just um, consolidating in a very tight range uh, near highs for multiple days, right? Like my favorite big board uh, setup is basically just the curl with an inside day. Um, is inside day like a familiar term with everybody? Or I don't know if that's like something people say. It's just kind of what I call them. Like intraday, inside day, intraday. Yeah, either or works. Yeah, I like an inside day candle. Like it like goes sideways all day basically, right? Exactly, yeah. So it's yeah. like, so like let's say the high is like 20. This, this would be a crazy range. But let's just say it's 20 and the low is 10. And then the next three days you get 18 to 12. And then you get 13 to 16. And then you get 14 mm, okay. or 15. Like it just gets to the high, right? And it doesn't need to be getting tighter each day. It can stay in the same range, but just when it stays inch and it stays, um, I mean, sorry, when it stays um, inside candles and in between the ranges and it's digesting at a higher stage, I mean, the breakouts on those, like, um, you know, you, you can get 20% breakouts from those on big tickets, right? Like Roblox is an example. Like that was like my best mental trades I've ever had in my life. And um, it was, you know, a big trade, like, uh, in relative terms um, it wasn't like a record trade for me but it was a really big trade and mentally it was one of the better trades I've had and that was kind of what I'm transitioning to try and trade those type of things so you know it, it can either be consolidating that at um, consolidating tightly at highs or digesting with inside days at um, a curl like for a bottom that's really nice too so you know for right now for big boards I love playing like small cap breakouts and stuff but um, it's not it's not I'm not as good at them um, as I was playing breakouts in OTC. So I'm mostly just looking for breakouts on um, one day candlestick uh, charts, uh, daily charts on, um, you know, large cap and mid caps. And I really like mid cap and large caps. And then, you know, on uh, bottom curls too, on, on small caps and mid caps. Um, I also like those with, like I said, like I just look for, you know, the candles to get a little smaller, selling volume to stop a little bit, um, inside dates coming in. And then obviously level two, you know, you gotta watch that a bit too, but. Um, you know, those are, those are kind of what I've been doing in the big boards lately. And, you know, I've just been taking like really big size in relative terms, like for me, at least like really big size on them, but, um, you know, with, with the right risks, right. Like, um, and I mean, then if you get the right one in the theme and stuff to it, it obviously makes it even better. Like MNMD for me in the three thirties of a, a few days ago, that was another really big trade. And I was sizing a lot there. Um, because it was just, it was worth, it was the right theme. Like I love that theme, but then I also loved the chart with the, like, the bottom curl with the inside days and everything, right? So it's kind of what I've been focusing on for big boards and what I'm hoping to get to um, as a big board trader. So. I love it, man. You mentioned data a couple of times. I'm just yeah. curious, you know, are you super data driven or um, you just use it to like, fiction? I'm not the smartest kid when it comes to school stuff. So, you know, I try, I try my best to be, um, all my data is super, um, it's super beginner. You could say like, I use like spike at and stuff too, you know, I speak at or however you say it. Um, it's, uh, I, it has all the data from like big words and stuff. It's pretty cool. A uh, great website to check out for quants and such just to get information. But, um, I have a subscription there. So I use that stuff, but most I just, I create my own Excel spreadsheets and it'll just be something like, let's say I'm testing, 
you know what say that dip in your strategy right um i i can i can t i'm like my best my best um skill is reading level two in otc um on momentum meters like i can really tell what's going on in the tops and bottoms like it's it's very rare that um you know in a in a relative term i'm not selling near a top um on an otc breakout not the full top but like on a on a certain push right like say a 24 cent break it goes to 24 8 i'm usually out at 24 8 like I, I can really read that but at the same time i wanted to find a sweet spot so i knew in my head right like where should i actually be looking for the exit and so i would just run data on that and see okay you know on the last 15 days i mean with how hot the market was you didn't have to do 100 days of data because by 100 days it's a completely different market right so if you like last 10 days you know, um, this specific strategy would work at 82% and it's given a profit rate of 14% with a risk rate of, you know, um, a failed breakout on an OTC of those type of movers. I mean, my failed risk was like 3%, right? So you're getting two to one risk, you're getting eight or more than two to one risk, you're getting 82% profitability and it's happening every single day, multiple times. Uh, you can't, it's, it, can, it might be hard to get multiple ones into that certain time range. Like it gave me, um, the, the numbers that I enjoyed enough to take the trade, right? So and that was a very data-driven trade. Um, and then with the gap ups, I was doing the same thing. I was just logging like, what day was this? Was it first day, green day, second day, green day, et cetera? What was the volume like? What was the VWAP? What was the close price, right? And then the gap based on that. And then the next day it'd be, okay, well, what, what was you know, all the same information, right? So then you kind of defer like, okay, this one closed at its daily high. And this one closed at 10% under, one of them gapped up more. Which one was it? Is this a common uh, theme, right? And then, you know, other things like, okay, the VWAP was, let's say, 6.7 cents. It closed at um, 7.5 cents. And then another one was 6.7 cents and closed at 6.9 cents. Which one gapped more? Was there anything to do with that? Or was that just the fluke, right? Then you start to notice things like I noticed with the, like, it was usually the third or fourth day gap ups were always stronger than the second and the first. Um, and it was after that so day and you know I'm not I'm not a genius I don't know why why it does that but I knew based on the data I was taking that it was just what was going on right so my data is pretty basic but um, the data that I take is basically just tracking so that I mean uh, trade strategies that I think uh, trade setups that um, I've been seeing working how often they work and how much can I actually expect prof profit rate and stuff right you know what I mean so that's what I usually run for with data. Like, I mean, I can't read a file until it likes me. Like, I don't know how to do any of that. And um, I don't know how to figure out like convertible debt and loans. Like, it's just not my suit of trading. And, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna force it to be, I'm just gonna run the data in the way that I can um, understand it, right? And for me, it's just the more simple math stuff. And uh, so that's just what I do for running the data. And I mean, the whole reason I started doing that was uh, like probably the same type of deal as this. Like I just saw, a, uh, Tim Grittani, um, uh like podcast thing and he was talking about running data and I was like no clue what he does you know like um, for data wise it'd be cool to run some data myself just to see what I'm doing right started doing that and then it, you know it just benefited me a lot um, running the data and seeing what works and what doesn't how often it works and that type of thing right and I also run data on my profitable factors of the day so basically I only trade from 9.30 to 11 and then three to four, depending on the day. Um, and the reason for that is between, just because whatever the numbers exactly are, they might be a little off. I make like 88% of my money between 9.30 and 11. I make 2% of the money um, the rest of the time and then 8% of the money but, uh, or 10% of the money um, between three and four, right? So, I mean, that's the simplest quant you can ever do, right? You're not, not, you're not performing well in certain hours. And if you're not performing well at all, then yeah, keep working. But if you're performing good, it's just certain hours of the day you're not, well, don't force yourself to be there those hours, right? Like just keep it a simple approach. And, you know, I still watch the market often like during those times and I'll still be paying attention, but I'm not gonna force myself to be making trades because clearly my setups just aren't there in those times, right? And whatever it is, like maybe I'm excited that I'm already profiting on the day. Maybe I'm, just, I'm mad that I'm red on the day, whatever is getting in my head during that time, I'm just not trading well. Right. So, um, so yeah, I, I, that was the easiest one I ran, but you know, uh, I don't even know if I fully call it a quant, but that's the most important data I've always run, but also the easiest.
and you know i think a lot of people sleep on this simplistic type of stuff right like they want they want to figure out ways to get you know the exact time a ticker's going to hit its high so they can get the perfect short and that stuff's awesome and there's some guys who can do it but i'm not that smart so i'm not going to keep it that way you know i'm just going to keep it simple so that's the type of data that i run personally awesome great tips there i like that one a lot yeah Any questions for him kyle jack i uh I love what you talked about the gap ups uh, throughout this first quarter of 2021. Cause I, I definitely took advantage of them being that I, I made more money in my e-trade account going long than short in those, in that period. Um, but I remember I was talking to Jack about this, like specifically um, TSNP and it was like day five and Jack's like, I'm going to take it for a gap up. And I was like, I didn't agree with, I didn't disagree with him. I was like, yeah, it probably gaps up. But like, I was like so conditioned from all previous market environments of like, like you do not buy on day five, like don't do it. But it's like, that was the market we were in. And that's what the stats said, like everything was gapping. So it was, you know, and, and the thing for me was with TSMP, I probably got that thing 27 days in a row. Yeah. <laughs> it's really every day. It was just gapping up. Literally, yeah. It just kept going. And it's like, like, to me, it's like, like, again, like I'm not, I'm not one to argue with it. Like if that's the way it's going, I'm just going to go with the flow. Right. And so, um, I remember though with like those gap ups, you know, it's been four days. And when I, even for me, cause I, I'm still a more aggressive trader. And in those days I was like, it's been like, this is like the sixth day I'm seeing this thing overnight. Like, and then I'm like, here's the risk in the morning. Like it was basically sell even, you know? So I'm like, you know what? I'll just keep trying it out and kept working. And, you know, I, I remember the whole reason, like everything really sped up for me in November um, to November, December was a good speed up. But January is when like, it wasn't even like the market was crazy. Like we all can say that nobody, nobody can't say that, but I really just went like balls to the wall and really started going hard because basically what happened was like November when or October, when the market slowed down, I started seeing all these guys that were up so much money in the year. And in my head, I started going like, I'm doing good. But like, if that was the market and we don't get that back, I did not take advantage of it. Like I wanted to, you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, I have so many regrets. And so, I'm like, you know what, like, you can't trade like that. So I took, I took a bit of time off. I disciplined myself and I was like, listen, like, that's not the market. This is, um, and then funnily enough, I, I took a vacation. I, I was living in Aruba and I took a vacation in Aruba for four days. Um, I bring my laptop and I have no stock stuff on my phone, um, or on the phone that I brought. And so I told myself, I'm like, Monday, I'm going to start trading again. Right. And when I came back Monday, it was the start of everything in November. And I was like, you know, like, there's no way that's like, like, that's awesome. You know, like it's starting back up. I'm just back. I'm in a great mindset. And, you know, it was nothing like I, whenever I take a break, it rarely ever has to do anything with um, financial. It's always my mindset. I need to get my mindset back to like a proper, you know, like I'm not going to perform. It's like, um, it's like if you're a professional athlete, right? Like you need to train your, your body to make sure you stay at a peak level. Right. But if your, if your body starts going out, your, your coach is not putting you into play right? Like go fix your body. Then you can start to play it, right? Like it's a professional athlete. And, you know, at the end of the day, we're professional traders. I mean, um, we have to train our mind too, right? So as soon as it starts to go in a, in a mindset that I'm not liking, like taking a break is the best thing to do. I mean, it's, it's easier to say that once you've made a little bit of money in the market and stuff, you're more willing to do so. But um, at the end of the day, like you'll never get to that point unless you're willing to take breaks when breaks are needed, right? So um then it came all back in November. And so when, when January was starting, I was like, listen, like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lose my account or anything like that or half my account, but I'm going to take more risks than I, than I have, because here's the thing. That's the opportunity that's here. Right. Like, and a lot of people were calling these kids dumb back in the day and saying like, Oh, like they're going too hard and this and that. And I'm sure many people say it about me, but the thing is like, if I didn't go that hard, I wouldn't be where I am. Right. So it's the same thing with those kids and stuff. You know, it's a different story if it's like you're all in Dogecoin. You know, you know what I mean? Like, that's different. But if you got strategies that work for you and you see the market's crazy and you just want to size up and keep sizing up and, you know, bite the bullet when it comes and just be accepting of that from the very start. I mean, that's that's what I did. And, you know, I don't regret it by any means. You know, not even on my first losing day. Or, you know, like my biggest losing week, that my only red week in like a year and a half. Like, even on those times I didn't regret anything because, you know, it got me to the point where I was. Right. So, you know, I think that the market comes back to where it was in those days, which I mean, I'm sure it will. Um, I think, you know, we'll probably get another year of uh, cycles like that where we get crazy markets and slow markets. And, you know, if that happens, I mean, I'm going to be right there again, trying to uh, take advantage of it. Right. And 
make it worth my time. So um, it's crazy to think though, like how much it's changed. Like you guys have all been trading for a few years now, right? Like OTCs and stuff like mm -hmm. 2018 summer, like 2019 summer, even like we were not getting oh, nothing. You know what I mean? Like, no. I was trying to break out and then just, there weren't any breakouts, right? Like it's changed a lot. And you know, that's why you gotta really work your hardest when it's there, you know? It's like right yeah. place at the right time thing, right? Like, I mean, we're, like we all were in the right place at the right time. Did we, like, not because we got lucky on one stock, but because we were trading a market that not many people traded and that market became pretty hot. And we all knew what we were kind of, I mean, not to say we know what we're doing, but we all knew a good amount of what we were doing. So we were able to take advantage of it when it was there, right? So, you know, um, that's kind of why I, I'm so aggressive in the last year in trading. It's just, you know, to take advantage of what was there and, not have any regrets you know come, come later right yeah i would say um yeah you definitely motivated me bro and like for anyone who doesn't know like connor isn't really um a part of like the tim sykes community he is as he noted he learned a lot from tim Gratani. um i met connor through a mutual friend and he was definitely like a big motivator for me um to like keep going and keep pushing because i was burning out like mid last year and uh, like when November and December like rolled around, we all like kind of hit that first stride of yeah. the sector momentums. And then like in January and February, like just progressively got, you know, hotter and hotter. Um, and we kept hitting it like as hard as we could. And I think that's like, like that was a big thing of making like, you know, significantly life-changing money. Um, and like another thing that I just wanted to note was like definitely oh, exactly. I mean some drop ups. Um, that is definitely something that, uh, I was doing as well and like that that's where the money was and yeah. like the first tweet I ever saw from you um, our buddy like liked it it was like 2020 changed a lot of lives like drastically and like 2021 yeah. would be even crazier like that's the first thing I've ever seen from you um, on Twitter and I saw that and I was just like yeah like he's he's probably right just like with the way everything was flowing so it was just like a reminder to just like keep going and like keep pushing and don't like take your foot um, off the gas and yeah. no I, I appreciate those comments but i completely agree with you like with the keep going stuff like i mean um you know with trading it's so cool because i mean you see these guys you know on twitter and stuff and i'm not talking like the you know the most of the, like most people but like you see these guys that you know are like original traders you know like 45 years old they've been doing it for a while and they got 50 you know 100 mil in their nice guys and just super cool and it's like holy like this is the job we have right like one day who knows like maybe we'll be at that level at, at, at some point right and um a lot of them didn't um have like it was never as easy for them to trade at our age like it is right so it's like why would we stop when we're kind of in you know one of the best markets any digital um like one of the best markets any person could digitally trade freely right like it's never been like this before for people that could just get on a laptop and i mean i travel the full year i am on i only trade on a laptop right like i don't i don't have monitors or anything i never had and it's like it's a pretty cool opportunity like you definitely got to take advantage of it you know like, so yeah i no, totally agree and um you are canadian uh, so like what, what broker do you use um, so, for like your OTC fills? Because I know a lot of Americans like have a lot of struggles with E-Trade and TD Ameritrade and like, yeah, uh, like all and Matt and Kyle can attest to like having really bad fills. So, like, I'm just curious what broker you use and like, how were your fills during uh, the hot um, market? Did you ever miss so I use, Yeah. So I use RBC and I have the best fills I've ever seen. Like the fills are unreal. Like on, like I'm getting like, like, I don't even know how to describe it. They're insanely good fills. Like the broker sucks. My broker doesn't tell me my average cost per share. It doesn't tell me what percentage I'm up. It doesn't tell me anything. Like it updates the next day and then it's old information. Like it's it's a horrible broker. Um, there's no real time data on it. Like it's terrible. But the fills are like stellar. Like I get if I like if I like let's say for example, I mean, all of you guys will know the situation. Like tickers coming down, it's at 22 cents. You go to buy some at 22, that's going to be bottom. You want to fill 22 to 22 too. And you slap and you don't fill many. I'd fill every time at the price I had limit, right? So it was a big help because my, my orders are so good. Um, but I use that and I use um, interactive brokers. 
the only thing I wish, I mean, RBC, like, I don't, there's no, like, hotkeys, there's no, like, uh, like, you can't point on a chart and buy, like, nothing like that. So, like, yeah, the fill times are good, but it makes up for literally nothing. Like, uh, you know, there's nothing offered by the broker. The commissions are $7 a trade. Like, it's ridiculous. So, the fills were amazing. The broker itself sucks. And that's kind of Canada, to say the least. There's, there's no good brokers here. Like, you know, if you get interactive, it's the best bet for you. Some people say Quest Trade's good. I've never used it, but um, I like Interactive. It's nice. There's usually good borrows on Interactive too, for like OTC multi day, like greens and shit, um, which I'm trying to learn. I'm not really the, like, the thing is, I'm, I like to swing trade a lot. So when I'm playing with sides, I like, like, um, swing trade big boards and stuff. So I'm kind of looking at swing shorts with big boards, but at the same time, in this market or the last few whatever yeah they've been working but i mean the second i start doing them it's gonna change and blow me up so i'm like i'll wait i'll wait and just learn them you know and figure it out at one point but, but yeah i use rbc and then i use trading view for charting um and then interact no uh sorry investors hub for level two so if you're canadian that's pretty much um pretty much what most canadians are doing is using using those type of um platforms and then those brokers yeah one thing that i really like that you say that always like kind of opened my eyes up was um just like how you you just keep it so simple and like it's not dumb what we were doing when like we're buying tsnp on like a six um, green day or 27 green day because like that's like that's the that edge of the market we're in right exactly. and the and change it. the so thing is like, everybody was calling me dumb for that and stuff like not every you know that's just a figure of speech but like you know i was that dumb kid that was like like i remember like one of the first messages that i ever sent to like any of you guys was um it was like friday at 355 and another thing was they gapped more on the weekend and i said i said size more on size more on the gap because i'm like uh, i just post i'm like remember your favorite tickers probably got more on the weekend i size more and i remember i was like it sounded so stupid but like it was just how it was you know it was just the simple truth and um a lot of those type of things like you know at time like the thing is looking back on it nobody thinks we're stupid for playing those you know everybody's like shit i wish i would play in the gaps you know what i mean and, and that's one of the good things that you know i don't have any regrets about january February. i mean of course i wish i made more everybody does but at the same time like you know i i really i pushed as hard as i could you know what i mean like i really tried um my hardest work the hardest study the hardest and you know the results were not bad so and i think i think the key distinction is what makes someone maybe like a young a dumb trader you know is not acknowledging the market environment which we we did which is why we aren't in that group it's like if if that if another trader was just pushing it so hard and they looked all smart but they kept pushing yeah. it exactly. like right now in otc yeah, yeah you were you were just some but like we weren't that we clearly all sized down Absolutely. i've certainly have size down tremendously and I, part of me like wants to keep taking that size to make more money but it, it's the market it's environment is just good. such an important thing and it's just not there right now in otc so absolutely no exactly like i mean i haven't traded i mean since that i have 20 percent of my income maybe you know what i mean like i don't touch them, not even maybe 15 like i really don't touch them at all um and it's just because like the market opportunities aren't really there as much as you know they they were and i'm not going to force them to keep playing them so i completely agree that's a really big thing and that's why i even found it in myself sometimes i were thinking these people that were making so much were being dumb in reality though they were taking opportunities that were there and i wasn't taking them so at the end of the day who was the one that was being you know relatively you know so that's kind of just what i forced myself to realize and force myself to work on um, that's why i was so okay with taking the size i was and another big thing is all four of us have trade strategies we know work, right? Like they prove themselves for many months now, like years, if not, they've been consistently profitable and we've been doing them for years. Like it, they haven't changed that much. Like they always change a bit with the market, but they haven't, they're the same core principles, right? Um, and we all have our own and we all have similar ones and whatever it may be. So when you have that and you also have a market that you can comfortably size crazy and just go for it. It's a, you know, it's a crazy recipe because it, it's just showing you, um, you know, how uh, it's just showing you like how uh, um, of mind blowing. It just, yeah, I have no clue what I was going to say. Let's just forget about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, 
Yeah. I couldn't agree more. It's like the core principles really stay the same no matter what market you're environment in. It's just the hot markets, everything's on steroids. So oh, give exactly. yourself the green light and, you know. Yeah. And, you know, you, you got to. And now it's like, like, I mean, even like GME and AMC, like when I found my trades in those, I was sizing insane because they were just such crazy opportunities, right? But that's when I find the trade setups that I, I know how to play. So it's like, I think that's a big difference between a lot of people too is, they size crazy even when they don't know how to play the trade setup, right? Yeah. Like you got to wait for your trade setup and then take the sides and then, you know, consistently prove yourself. And if, as long as you're confident, you're playing, you know what you're doing. I mean, even a couple blow ups and not actual blow ups, but you know what I mean, are going to get paid off by, you know, not even many wins, you know, like three blow offs should be paid off by two, uh, sorry, three blow offs should be paid off by one, maybe two trades, right? And if you're doing that, then the risk is totally there. It's totally worth it, right? So. Yeah, it was like when I had my big loss, uh, I think it was in like in the second week of February. Yeah, I think it was like seven. Yeah, it was. Right yeah, there seven. with you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> it was like seven or eight times my biggest loss ever. Um, yeah. I still finished like the week up, like biggest week ever by like two or three times. So yeah. it was like. I that, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Ours was MMFF and then you uh, kind of got stuck in the COUV uh, hall. So. I made a gap up. Yeah, they're so. really trying to put the gap up two minute trade, but you know, but but the thing I always told myself, um, when the market was hot in January, is I said, uh, I'm not going to say like exact numbers, but let's say, um, like just for ratios, right? I'm like, I am totally okay with losing one because before I didn't have one and now I have five, right? Mm -hmm. So to me, it was like, even if I take that big blow up, it's gonna, it's gonna be hard, it's gonna hurt, but if. I'm willing to the whole time beforehand tell myself I'm okay with taking this because now I didn't have this before and now I have this, right? And as long as you kept that loss in parameters, right? If you said, I'm okay with losing one because I ain't have one before and I have 1.2 now, like, okay, you know, maybe don't lose one, but if you keep it in the proper perimeters, um, you know, you, it's it's totally fine to do, right? So when I had like, a loot, like my first losing week, like same time as you, probably the week of or the week after, um it was like okay it was coming i knew it was you know and then i started the sides down all like right away and uh and you know you you get in your head and you're like I should have sized down last week like i should have known it was popping out and it's like like if we said that we would have stopped in december you know what i mean so you know you can never fully guess those type of things but. yeah exactly it's like i didn't really have any regret like my feeling after my loss was almost like relief it was like okay you've you've done it like you've pushed as hard as you could do and now like the market's telling you now you have to take your step back now you have to size down yeah, um, and for exactly. me like now we've kind of like separated a little bit where now you've gone to like the big boards and like i've kind of just stuck with otcs just trying to be like consistent and make smaller money whereas yeah. like you're still trying to um like keep pushing and, and keep uh being the best trader you can with the big boards so like my maybe my last question if you guys don't have any questions left my last question is like um how much progress have you made so far like in the big boards and like what um say february was your best month now yeah, yeah probably like what percent um of february are you making like in these months trading the big boards like are you making like 50 percent of what you made in fe uh, february like 20 percent 70 percent like um, probably the 50, number 50 to 70 percent 50 to 60 percent of february is being made right now um that that was that's not including from here probably till September though, because I'm, I'm truly taking a break now and actually um, trading the swing, but chilling out a lot. But um, like, I mean, March, April and May um, were probably like 50 to 60% of um, what I was making and what I made in February and January. Um, so the kind of way that I went with it is I can't, like when I go to these big boards, I'm having less opportunities, but I'm having the same percentages. Like I've never had a thousand percent trade. I don't think I've ever had like I've had like two or three three hundred percent trades. You know, like I'm not I, I can't hold like that. You know, I don't have diamond hands or whatever. But you know, if I'm looking for fourteen percent trades on OTCs and looking for fourteen percent on big boards, I can size so much more, right? There's less opportunity. It's not every day, but if I get a few of those, you know, it can really make up things, right? And then you know, I'm still nailing ones that are like thirty percent or more. Um. And so I've been doing that a lot and, you know, still making great money. And the kind of difference is I've sized up so much um, compared to OTC 
but I went from a market that sized up so much compared to OTC. So if I was taking like OTC risk level trades on these, like I'd be way, way, way more than I'm sizing now, but like my risk is lower now on trades. Um, I'm sizing more money and it's a lot more relaxed in the moment because, you know, I'm day trading. I mean, I'm swing trading a little more. Um, so that's kind of what I've been doing for now. So, you know, it's, it's going pretty good. Um, you know, and the goal is like to get to do this a hundred percent of my income at one point, you know, and at one point, I'm sure, uh, if I, if I work hard enough, I'll be able to get there. You know? So it's kind of where we are now, but. Do you, um, do you find it hard? Like, I know like you like to have to like go out and have fun and like, that's kind of what, um, also like separates us is I feel like I was like very, like for my numbers, I know that I could make more money like the entire February. Like if I sat there from open yeah. to close, like I would make more money. Whereas like you recognize like my times are this time and this time. And yeah. like you uh, diversified your time with like going out and like hanging out and partying and having fun and going golfing and doing whatever. Um, and now like I'm trying to like catch up yeah. like with that um, because I was just like way too focused on trading where like you kept that like healthy balance for sure so, yeah. like, that like also has really um helped you uh and i yeah, know like, no self-aware and you noticed that yeah uh, but it's like like did you ever find it hard like in the hot market okay. like to stay focused like did you how much time did you put on the scanning at night and finding like the inside days and stuff like that finding breakouts um yes i was in aruba at the time um that's where i was living at that at that time and um I would trade 9.30 to 11, and then at 11, I'd go to the beach or go golf and just have a few drinks on the beach and chill at, like, this beach. Uh, it's called Moonwood Beach Club, and if you're having a Aruba, definitely go, but just go chill there for the day. Um, and then, at, you know, 3 to 4, um, which is 4 to 5 um, in January in Aruba, I'd go back to the condo and I'd trade the rest of the day. And then at 5 o'clock, um, you know, I'd, I'd head out for whatever. I'd probably be out to, like, you know 2 a.m but then from 2 a.m to like 3 30 or 4 a.m i'd scan and i'd write like 20 pages but for the weekend scan like when i'd scan for sunday night at that time it'd be like 20 pages of words like i would my scans were ridiculously intense but i was just preparing myself right um so you know i was very hectic with stuff but i was scanning still um you know like two hours um it was just like it was like, uh, it's like the Nate Michaud sh uh, shirt, like be prepared or don't show up or whatever it says. Like for me, it was just like, if I go in, if like if I want to go party tonight and I want to spend the day on the beach and this and that, I can do that. But if I don't scan after that, uh, then I'm never going to be able to live this life because I'm not making money. I won't make money, right? So I just had that in my mind. So it didn't matter what I was doing. Like I was finding time to have like usually two hours or um, two hours, to, uh, sorry, like four hours on weekends and then like one to two hours on like every week night right and so i just scan 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 and then be ready for the next day so i just found them um, leaving for leaving for the day was really beneficial for me because one in that market like as dumb as it is to say a lot of these things were all day movers right so if i had specific swings and all day movers and i was gone for the day i mean i was holding them right they weren't big size it wasn't even uh, you know five percent of my um, income but you know, they were, they were making me extra money. So it was also an added bonus, like being out for the day and actually taking your mind off the market. You come back at three and you see things with like an open mind and a clear mind and you can, you know, go execute the trades you knew you were going to execute this time anyways, right? So taking breaks during the day and just, you know, all of that was really beneficial for me. And it all started because uh, like what happened, I was just in Aruba and I was like, I've been here like a month and I trade too much. I was like, I'm like, I'm, inside all day i'm not at the beach like why live like why don't i just go home why am i living here if i can't see anything so i said you know what like i'll hit my daily goal and then i'll get out of there i mean i keep my daily goal really small like really small and like in like the slow markets of like november i mean or october or september when it was slow i was making like maybe you know 1500 bucks a day but my goal was 200 dollars a day because as soon as i hit 200 I was okay with going for more, but if I, my goal was 1500 and I hit 1300, I'd be really disappointed and I'd hurt myself mentally. Right. So then the next day when a trade is good or that day when a trade is good, or I wouldn't let myself leave my house. But as soon as I made 200 bucks, I mean, if I only made 200 bucks, I'm not leaving, but you know, in my head, I convinced myself, if you make more than that, just go enjoy your day. And then I'd make, you know, $200 goal, but make 1500, 2000 or 3000 or, you know, 
even just 800, but you beat the goal and it's an easier way to get out of the house. Right. So that's what I had to do to kind of train myself to, you know, get out there and enjoy. And then when I was already used to that come December, January was kind of already the perfect remedy because I was so used to the routine. Right. Yeah. So did you not sleep too much? No, no. I used to sleep way too much. and Now I don't sleep very much. So like, that like I feel like for me I know if like I didn't get that if I didn't get uh, sufficient sleep like I would just like I wouldn't be able to keep focus um yeah like, that's just a me thing but like if you can do it like that's great and it sounds like you like you mastered yourself you know what I mean that's why you're able to like what'd you grow yeah. your kind of like 300,000 percent uh 308,000 percent this year yeah 308,000 <laughs> percent and not like, that you mastered your schedule you know what I mean? <laughs> it- yeah yeah with the with the um realizing myself or whatever there's the exact term you said um i've talked about this before on twitter and stuff i mean my whole twitter is a joke as whoever calls me knows that but sometimes i tweet some stuff and i was talking about um going to therapy for trading yeah I, saw that. I did that for i did that for a year and i did a therapy session once a week and i would say hey why did i react this way to this loss why did i react to this game why can't i get out of the house why like anything right like why is this making me feel this type of way? And I mean, it's um, a certain amount of hours, depending on where you live, is a business write-off. You know, it's a business expense. If you ever watch the show Billions, they all talk to a therapist. Like, it's not some weird thing, you know? And I mean, that benefited me a ton because it started to allow me to tell, uh, allow me to realize in a million ways, like, okay, why am I looking at this? Why am I? And then, you know, they're not, they're not going to be able to tell you, like, why is this not breaking out? They're not a life, like a stock coach, but they can tell you why you think why your brain works in any way and then you can analyze it yourself and start to use it and find you know how to perform at your peak self and whatever you're looking to perform at so you know i did that for a while and that's why um at least i like to think i'm as self um aware when it comes to trading as i am so yeah that's such a that's impressive like that's such a you think of edge in terms of like trading like numbers and stats like we've talked about it's but like, a whole other edge is like therapy right there. And in case, again, there's this connotation of like, oh, you go to therapy, like yeah. you're okay. But it's like, no, like that's, that literally, there's no doubt in my mind, you doing that took you to the level oh, that you like, wanted to get to. And anyone who didn't do that now doesn't have that tool that you have, you know, and that's, wow. I couldn't give you more kudos for that. That's yeah, that's awesome. I, I appreciate that. And you know, if you're in therapy, because you need to talk to someone and any of that, like, again, good for you, because it's, it's acting on something that you're realizing could benefit you doesn't matter what it's for it doesn't have to be for training it could be mental health anything obviously those are the more um norm like normalized uh, reasons for going to therapy but i mean they can tell you why your brain works in any way like that's the job right so if, if you're working in a psychology driven job like go figure it out you know go realize yourself and maybe you don't need therapy maybe you're smarter than me and you can figure it out yourself but uh, you know i i needed to figure it out from a professional so did that and you know here we are in um um, mostly psychology driven traders mind i guess you could say so awesome man yeah this is a great episode i don't think we even need to share any charts or anything this was just awesome a ton of great advice appreciate you coming on we definitely need to do it right. again we're just it. scratching the surface i think so <laughs> yeah man i'm always in so it's like good it's good being on though you guys have a good one absolutely you too if you're yeah. new make sure you like subscribe uh we do this once a week uh, we'll put Connor's Twitter uh, just in the description. So make sure you go check it out. He has some funny tweets on there. Most of the jokes there, but for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah his, tweets, his tweets make me laugh. I actually have his notifications on because midday, you never know. You just need a good laugh. He's always back. <laughs> so. <laughs> so you can either laugh at how stupid I am or laugh at how funny I try to be. So it's either, either one. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for coming on. Uh, we do this every yeah, week. Coming. So your viewer make sure you watch our old episodes uh watch next week's episode that's all we got today so have a good one everyone